So won't you come out, help me, and chase this Rocky Mountain freedom. But that my high air you're breathing, wind you where the river rolls. Hey everyone, it's Cody with uh, Off Grid Mountain Life. Uh, this is the second video here. Um, told you I would go over a few things. We just buttoned up moving all of uh, our water stuff over. So we had to move our water treatment back. There was like a stub wall that was right here. And I only had about a foot to walk through. Since we finished the basement, we had to pull this wall out. Uh, we put a new pressure tank in and piped it all in real nice. So I've got a, a ozone iron filter that does iron manganese. And then this is the softener and that's the brine tank. So we've got pretty, pretty hard water up here. Uh, we're in a mining town, so we got a lot of, a lot of minerals. So we gotta take all that out. Got the EG4 battery bank cabinet back here. When we moved everything, had to bring that in before we could put this in. So before getting this set up, we need to replace these two inverters because these are the old VXs. Uh, they're VX 3648s, so 48 volt, um, 3600 watt. And they don't communicate with all the new stuff. So I've got two new uh, FM 80s that handle the panels out front and on the roof. And I need to replace these to the new VFXR uh, 3648s. And these paired with the new FMs, and I have a Mate 3 upstairs, we can run Optics RE through Outback. And that way I can monitor from a distance uh, over, over internet and be able to control and see what's going on in the house. As of right now, really, it's if I'm only standing here and looking at our Mate 3, can we see what's going on? So I'm excited to do that. And for us to do the correct settings for the new lithium bank, we need these anyway, because you're unable to do the settings at, a, it, it doesn't go to such a, a an amount for the charging. These are only made for, for lead acid batteries, which is right here. This is our lead acid bank, 48 volt. These are six, six volt batteries. They're 420 amp hours. So I think when I worked it out on this bank, it's like 40 um, kilowatt hours, but you can only use half of it. So it's about 20, whereas this is 30 kilowatt hours and you can use 80%. So that's about 24, 25. So this alone will be more capacity than this bank. And honestly, I think I've got a dead battery in here somewhere or, or a dead cell because I'll be up at 50 volts, you know, pretty steady to the middle of the night. And then all of a sudden it tanks and goes down to like 46. And then my generator starting at low voltage. So there's definitely something wrong with one of the cells in the batteries here. And as I mentioned in the last video, we just finished our basement. So we got a lot more power demand and uh, apologies for, for the hot mess, but had to get some things working without reworking this whole wall. So this was all installed by the previous owner. I, uh, I put the new charge controllers in and the, the pull mount out front, but um, this has worked pretty good so far. I'm excited to see these working with the new bank. So we're gonna have to pull all the tops off and get everything exposed. And I want to I want to minimize my downtime because once I'm I turn everything off, I got no power. So I have headlamps and stuff working. So just uh, wanted to show you guys kind of what we're dealing with, and we'll we'll pull all this stuff off, expose it, we look at it, and then get a plan on what we need to do to pop these in. Okay, we got everything exposed. So I pulled all the caps off of everything, and we got, there's actually. They've got these pretty nifty extenders because um, this is one of the prefab box boxes for Outback. It's an older version, but 
it covers all the wires coming out here and here but you got to get the rings out of the inside and i'm glad that i'm able to reuse these i'm pretty sure i'm able to reuse these because these didn't come with it so that one box come slides in here which it has the same it had this plate that slid in so you pull that out and then this slides in its spot and then this actually mounts to the other end underneath the cap and then that that covers your your main um power lines so i got all this loose i got the rings loose so we're gonna throw the power make sure there's nothing energized in here because there's a lot of amperage going through all this we'll pull all the wires off uh, i'll probably take a few photos make sure that you know i put them back in the right spot i mean it's all straightforward you got the l1 l2s um, i have this set up in a stack fashion so this is the master this is the slave and it runs a split phase through this auto transformer and i have the covers off of everything because I was looking at all the wiring and everything. As I mentioned in my previous video, my wife and I bought this house back in 2020 and I had to learn from scratch on how to live off grid and take care of this system and these batteries. And you didn't see before, well, there's a couple of residuals, residuals here, but you know, for you guys that have your lead acid battery banks, you know this site all too well. You know, every month I gotta come in here with gallons of water and this little little funnel and come all the way back take these off which this this battery bank was uh pretty ingenious it was uh set up by one of the local solar guys but he built it out of aluminum or actually he built it out of steel so it's got a steel frame and then he used plexiglass for these and then there's there's magnetic strip all around so i can just grab the handles pop it right off and then when you put it back on it seals up and then we got the auto vent to vent all the the gases out that it off gases but it's pretty ingenious and I, I mean it works but this thing is just a giant eyesore and super hard to to work with and getting in that very back back cell you know in these batteries with that funnel I, Got a flashlight in my mouth and trying to fill them up make sure i don't overfill them i'm gonna tell you i'm not gonna miss those days because this thing is going to be virtually maintenance free so so we're gonna throw the power unhook these and get the other ones in as quick as possible so we can have power back up at the house All right, got it all buttoned up. Got the two new VFXR 3648s put in and installed. Put all the plates back in. It looks more presentable here, minus the all these wires on the side. But found out, so reading the uh, install manual uh, with the new VFXRs, you don't need the 240X um, balancer, the auto transformer. So that's nice. So I shut that off. Uh, they balance themselves. I had to get a new 10.3 hub and replace the old hub four. And they stack a little bit different. Uh, this, you actually stack it as master and then L2 um, submaster. So these are running in a master master form on different legs whereas with the old ones here they ran master slave split split phase so only downside is they're both masters so 
they won't go to sleep. So this, the bottom one won't go to sleep like the other one did because it was a master slave. So I consume a little bit more power doing that. Not a whole lot, but uh, now I'm able to install the battery bank because uh, this has the, the parameters for a LiPo battery. And yeah, pretty excited. So next video is gonna be putting the battery bank together and getting it installed.